We explored a huge area in the last video. By huge area, I mean the entire like full size map. Where's my map at? Here it is right here. This whole big size full like level four map. Yeah, whole thing explored. It was fun. We even added map markers and taught about how to use them in that episode too. So make sure you go back and check it out if it's something you would like to know about or you just wanna see what's around this really cool world that we have around us. But before we get on to our next project, I asked for some name suggestions for Donkey here. And one I liked that I'm gonna go with is something that I was calling the Donkey during the stream that I was doing a lot of the exploring in. So we're gonna grab our name tag here. We're gonna go over to our anvil in here and the name is gonna be Donkey. Now, whenever you say it, you have to use your best Shrek voice, which mine isn't that great, but Donkey, come on, let's explore Donkey. We're going to make sure we use him for something else later in the season. And even if we don't, we'll make sure we at least give him a nice home. For now, he's tied up here to make sure he doesn't get away. And we also got a lot of great comments in the last video. And I want you to be sure to leave your best comment in this video to contribute to the series and to let me know how you think things are going and to help give those YouTube analytics a little bit of a boost. I had a number of people let me know that they didn't know about map marking. So I'm glad that that did help out a lot. And also I got a cool decorative idea and comment from Russell with his name spelled backwards about how to use treasure maps as a decoration. So we will be doing this at some point, I'm sure as well, because that sounded like a really cool idea. And I think it would be fun to add in a few rustic looking maps around the place. So today we are going to be working on our storage area. Now this early in the world, it's a bit too much to do any sort of automatic storage system. We don't have the redstone supplies. We don't really have enough supplies in general, right? Like we've been living out of these chests. There's a few chests up top there and our like mining area, but we don't really have a whole lot of stuff. So I'm thinking a manual storage system this early in the game would be perfect. What we can do is we can go over how to make a storage building and we can go over exactly how to organize your storage in the best way, at least in my opinion, when you're talking about the early game and doing a manual storage system in a way that you can actually find everything and keep track of it and not have to, you know, live out of a whole bunch of junk chests where you can't find things. Now, before we actually get started here, though, hopefully you're going to be noticing some subtle differences in my episodes. Since I also stream on YouTube here and I'm often working on things here on the guide world in my streams, I want those of you who don't watch the streams to feel like you aren't missing out. Usually in streams, I will go through like the planning process or the actual building process. Sometimes it's just preparation work and material gathering and that sort of thing. We'll talk about game mechanics. We'll talk about the things to do with the episode more in depth or uh, maybe answer questions that people have or read suggestions that people have and that sort of thing. And I don't always have time to show and do all of those different things in video because videos are usually going to be 20 to 30 minutes, whereas live streams are going to be hours long. So you may hear me reference moments in a live stream to make things super, super easy for you. The live streams will now have chapters like the videos do. So if you look in the description of that stream, you'll see me talk about maybe some base spoilers for my base around here at 29 minutes and 50 seconds into the stream. Or at 42 minutes and 40 seconds, you may see me talk about the build palette that we're going to be using. And there's other segments in there too that are relevant to the episode today. Those chapters are links straight to those parts of the stream. So it's super easy for you to go in and get a 10, 15 minutes like snippet of the exact thing that you want without having to watch the full two and a half hour stream. I will also likely be recording segments of my video in stream as well. And I may even leave my camera on for those. So, you know, it's a moment from the live stream that we're including into the video and you'll get a feel for how these two kind of relate to each other and what types of information and things that you're going to see in each one. So keep a lookout for that. You might see my beautiful face plastered on screen even later in this video. My goal, though, is to still give you everything you need in the videos just like i always have just like you've been getting up until this point but just point you to how you can easily get that next level of detail or information that you can find in the streams so let me know how you feel about this after you've watched the video down in the comments section below so after spending some time looking around and thinking about how i want my base to lay out i've kind of decided 
that over in this area may be where a lot of our starter things end up going. I know we did the uh, like the furnace system over there and maybe that was a mistake, but that's fine. We're going to be working over here more. We have our mine shaft here and I even did a little bit of looking around. Oh, not only our mine shaft, we have our mending villager here and our zombie spawner, um, which we'll talk about here in just a few moments. And somewhere like right up there, if I go over far enough and dig straight up, we come out like right by our campsite, which is really nice too. So this is a really convenient area to work in in the early game. And our actual like storage area entrance is gonna kind of go up in here. We're gonna have to chop down a lot of this. And I'm thinking it's gonna be like in this direction right here somewhere. But I do have a problem. My problem is that I do plan on expanding out this zombie spawner area because I want to get more villagers in here for discounts and I want to get specifically librarians and we need to put them 16 blocks away from that zombie spawner there, which means that and I, I need to do it all the way around the whole area around here. So that means that we're going to actually need to claim some of this area for that. And then from there, we'll actually know where our storage can go. So I think I'm going to have to break out my pickaxe and I'm going to measure out 16 blocks in each direction from here, dig out a big square area. And then on the other side of that, me and you, we're going to take a look at where the storage is going to go. Okay. So here we are. Big room carved out a lot of space to use. Now, there's a few different ways that we can look into like actually adding our chests in here, right? So there's there's the most efficient way, which is doing chests sort of like this, right? And let's see if I can get another one up here. And I could even do maybe a fifth one, right? You got five chests and then they're stacked this way. That way you can take full advantage of all of the space that you have, including the fact that somebody like me apparently cannot click chest properly. And you just do this all the way, like everywhere, right? That gives you a lot of chests, a whole lot of chests. Um, but it doesn't look very organized. It doesn't look very neat, um, especially like if you just take this all the way down and you don't break it up, right? So I don't think I wanna do that. I don't think I wanna do that. And then I think I wanna like actually like I'm going to like carve into here even more. So I'm actually going to chop out more space than I've already chopped out. So like what if chests are like this? So we so we do utilize our space in that direction. And then we have some sort of shelving, probably half slabs because half slabs are, are like the most efficient block to use for this because the chest can still open. If you put a full block above a chest, it's not going to open. So you need something that's a non full block. It could be a stair. As long as the stairs upside down, it could be a slab. It can be a uh, trap door, things like that. So then we got to think, well, what kind of color do we want in here for our shelves? And then after that, we got to think, what kind of spacing do we want? Like, do I just want like single tall pillars separating kind of like this, right? To segment things off and maybe like each section can kind of become something. It can be its own thing. Um, or do and then like we would have like one two three more right and then it would be segmented again like this it doesn't give us a lot of room for like additional decoration and stuff but it's efficient for our space or do we waste more space and then do like three like this and then do three and then that gives us additional room to create depth here where we have like i don't know like stairs and fences and lighting and all sorts of stuff but then we're we're using up even more of our space that we're already using up by putting the slabs there i'm kind of leaning this route that way we don't end up having this huge room <laughs> it's only going to have like 20 chests in it you know what i mean so i think we're going to go this route so i'm going to figure out what kind of slab we're going to put here and i don't know what i'm going to use as my pillars yet either i plug these in for now because i, I don't know if i want it matching the outside of what I have there or not yet, but we'll find that out shortly. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're making a big storage room like this, you're going to need a lot of chests. Chests cost a lot of wood. We're going to need a lot of wood. I'm, I'm looking around a whole lot of wood. I've used all the space. I don't even know how we're decorating this yet. I think the plan is, I think the plan is I'm going to get the wood. It's nighttime for me. It's 10 p.m. 
probably stay up till about midnight. Maybe a little bit. Maybe I'll go to bed a little bit sooner. I don't know. I'm going to get wood to make enough chests. And then tomorrow, sometime early, I'm going to live stream. And we'll probably record some of this, the creation and design of this room and the live stream together. So let's do it. And we have chests here in place, ready to go. And it, it actually, it, it feels like a good amount of chests. I would not have wanted more chests than this. It took a while to get all the wood even for this. It was quite the task. And I'm here with the live stream right now. So everybody in YouTube land say, or YouTube video land, I guess is what it would be. Say hi to everybody in stream land. Everybody in stream land, say hi to video land. And if you're saying hi to yourself, you're really weird and stop doing that because you're gonna mess up space time continuum and all of that stuff we learned in like back to the future. So don't do it. But next, what I need to do is I need to work on design of this room. And that's what I love doing on stream because I get a lot of live feedback and help of how to design a room. And mostly I'm going to look for help on like how to pick all of the colors and such that we're going to do in here. I think the floor is probably going to be a continuation of what we've done in here. We did in here, uh, the dark oak. Um, I could maybe be convinced otherwise, but I think it's good to have some kind of continuity. So I think we're going to bring the dark oak out this way, right? Um, we're also going to need to build some type of like little entryways. We have a little one on that side, a little one on that side, and a big one here in the center, just to give a little bit better of a flow and make things feel a little bit more open. And the ceiling is going to be kind of like this, like it's going to be kind of roughed in because uh, I do still want it to feel slightly unfinished and cave like we'll probably put some breaks in the floor, too. Um, but I think the like the detailing of the chest area, like the pillars or whatever we put here, I think we'll do something that looks pretty good there. We probably will have that look very pristine as though the storage area was just made. It was just kind of like made to fit in this space. So I'm going to go on with the stream. We're going to do a little bit of talking and design and we may pop in for a little update here and there. Otherwise, I'll see you on the other side of this clip. So we're in the process of replacing the floors here and there's going to be a lot of detail added in here. We're just kind of starting out with a blank slate. But it kind of reminded me or made me think that we actually need to talk about lighting a little bit. Because one of the things that you want to do whenever you're doing a room is you want to spawn proof the floors. And what I mean by that is we want to get the light level below or above zero. Because at zero is when mobs can spawn. One and one and above. Any kind of light at all makes it so mobs can't spawn, right? So we're going to do that with hidden lighting. You see how I can knock all of these lights out, all these torches out right here. And the room is still lit up. That's because we've hidden lighting under the floor. And I want to show you how I did that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a kind of grid pattern just to give us like good coverage. Make sure we don't have any mobs spawn. And I kind of even like to have my chest areas lit up well too, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to put a torch right there under the ground. We're going to maybe skip like three. Maybe we can even skip more, right? I don't know. I kind of like... I'm looking at how well the floor is lit. I kind of like it having a like very even tone to it and not a lot of shadows. So we'll skip three blocks. We'll place a hole in three blocks. We'll place a hole in and we're going to make a grid pattern across the whole floor. OK, so we have our grid laid out here and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be placing torches in these little holes that we put down in the ground. Now we're going to have the floor at this level. And I'm going to show you right now exactly what we're going to be doing with this. And let me actually do that by putting lights down in these first few sections here. So we can fill in part of this floor and you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. Because I did it over here. I did it over there and you probably wouldn't even see it because we're actually hiding our lighting underneath the floor. The lighting is actually hidden. And this is a Bedrock Edition exclusive because on Bedrock Edition, light can travel through slabs, stairs, and a few other blocks that it can't on Java Edition. It can travel through a couple things on Java, like uh, I think it travels through flat uh, trap doors. Um, it travels through carpet, but it does not travel through slabs. So we can actually give ourselves a nice looking slab floor and then have the room be very well lit, but not see any torches. So you don't have to worry about torch spamming to make it so mobs can't spawn. And then later on at the very end of things here, 
I'm going to make things look good via RTX mode where we'll add in some mood lighting to make it look good with RTX. And when I get to that point, I'll tell you a little bit about lighting with RTX. We'll probably keep that point kind of short and simple for the most part. But yes, this is super awesome. Put a hole down in the floor, cover it with slabs and you have lighting that cannot be seen, but still lights up the room and keeps mobs from spawning. All right, stream told me I had to get these guys. We ran across the horses of the apocalypse here. Um, what, one of them didn't make it, unfortunately. Maybe I'll play you guys the replay footage from the stream for this, but... Oh, hey, a skeleton horse. Ah, run away! <laughs> what the heck? Uh, they wanted me to come get them. So if you guys have any names and any potential uses for our three horses of the apocalypse, let me know down in the comments below. We're getting close to the main feature here, which is going through and doing the organizing of all of our chests and kind of like the method in which I use to do that. But I just wanted to show you the progress so far. We're not on stream anymore. Stream helped me out a lot and we came up with a really cool design. So remember like one of our bits of lore about our world here is the fact that we are a, I guess I've kind of chosen an elven civilization, but like cave elven, if that makes sense. And I'm not taking any direct, uh, like copying any particular designs. I'm trying to kind of come up with what my own version of things is going to be. So I don't want it to look dwarven. I don't want it to look traditional elven. And I am like coming up with some like ways of, oh gosh, I am coming up with some like color schemes and ways of doing things that I think I'm gonna really make my own. But part of this to me is when I think like of an elven like civilization, I always think of like brighter colors. So we're going with these saturated colors in areas here that I think make sense, but they don't overdo it because we are living down in the caves and these like this deep slate and darker colors are things that we have a little bit more access to. So to me, it does make sense to use it, but like we're going to be using it in a sense that I think is subtle and it, it's subtle, but it sticks out if that makes sense. Right. So this is kind of what like the total, like the end look of all of these little end caps is going to be, if that's what you want to call them or all of the, um, all of the pods where the chests are is we're going to have like these guys right here, dark Oak there. We'll have the acacia shelves. We'll have, the pillars here and then I'm, I'm gonna do something up here i haven't really quite designed that yet and you'll see that once we get to the next segment and also like we have here the little entryways in we actually have three entryways in and out instead of one i thought that made a lot more sense it looked a lot better uh, we have some archways there it's looking really good it's structured but it's also kind of broken down a little bit i still need to detail the ceiling as well we got a lot of work to go here before i can call this episode done and i'm running out of time today so i gotta get back on it Okay, now our decorations are mostly in place. I'm trying to get some grow, grow berries. I don't think they're called grow berries. I'm trying to get some glow berries to grow here. I'm not having much luck. I, I feel like this is not gonna be very productive because I do want some glow berries to like light up the room. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. We'll let these grow for now. And we have emeralds here because emerald is gonna be one of our blocks that we use as like our accent piece on the exterior of this building, which we'll be doing or showing off in a future episode. Maybe even the next one, I don't know. I need to see how quickly I can do it on a stream. <clears throat> So we're still trying to get some more emeralds, emerald blocks. I've done pretty good so far. We need to get some more. I do like the way it looks. I like the way it, it kind of accents and it actually, it, it doesn't really go real well with the acacia, but that's just, it's intent. It's supposed to be that way. It's fine. Maybe one day I'll swap all the acacia out for like warped wood or something. I don't know. But in any event, we need to actually start marking everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these signs and we're going to put them to mark all of our chests. Now, originally my plan was going to be that we'll just do this for that, this for that, but then I, I, I can't, I don't have a way to do these. I don't know that I like it on the floor. So what if this goes with that, this goes with that, but then how do I mark those? This is an interesting problem. Maybe I'm just going to have to get rid of those and just mark on the actual chest themselves. I don't like doing that so much because it gets rid of the look of the chest and like then I have to be careful to not click the sign but I, I guess I guess that's fine I guess that'll do let me get signs on all the chests so now we have item frames almost everywhere how did I miss that one um we have a big one up top that's gonna like signify a larger category 
and then the ones on the individual chest to signify what that chest is going to have within that category. Now, before we start moving items in here, we should probably bring them all over. I have a bunch of chests here. They're all empty right now. These are temporary because I want to bring all the items I have pretty much everywhere else in the world, at least places that I don't want items to be anymore. I'm going to bring them all here. I don't even think I have near this much, but I just, I just made a bunch of chests just in case. I'm going to transport them all over. Then we're going to start making our larger scale categories. Okay, we're back. And before I start throwing things into item frames, I wanted to show you something I just figured out. And I tested this on Java Edition. It doesn't work on Java Edition. And it doesn't work with any other type of plant that I've seen. Take a silk touch, like pickaxe, axe, whatever, and hit one of these glowberry vines like this. You get a glowberry from it. And you hit it with silk touch. I don't think it's supposed to do that, but it does. So if you want lots of glowberries, silk touch these empty vines, and you'll get a glowberry every single time. Super cool, fast way to get glow berries. Pro tip for you guys. I don't know if anybody else knows this. I haven't seen or heard from this anywhere. I asked some people uh, in my Discord channel. They, they no, none of them knew that this was a thing. So yeah, free glow berries. Anyways, we have items here in our inventory and I wanna start organizing and we're gonna start by category, right? And this is the way I like to do it. And you can kind of do things your own way a little bit too. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a deep slate category a stone category and we're going to have a like dirt category. Dirt is kind of like dirt, grass, sand, gravel, like those types of things will be here. Um, and I don't know, we could probably, we could probably even do things like leaves and uh, like landscaping moss, like those types of blocks too. Cause this is a lot of space. We can probably do all that. Right. And then just in case I need any other like ability type ones, I guess I could put more ability type ones there. So I'm, we're going to leave those two blank. Then we're going to come over here and we're going to have an area for like our ores and that type of stuff. Um, iron ore, diamonds, like all of our valuables, like that kind of thing. Right. Then we're going to have a section for mob drops, which I'm going to put gunpowder for that. Then we'll have a section for like detailing like blocks, like lighting and chains and fences and maybe not fences, but like iron bars and that type of thing. Those will go there. Uh, we need a redstone category. So we'll put redstone there. Thought I had another one. Yeah, we need like a food category, a food area. So we'll put food here maybe. And the big thing is, is you don't have to fill everything up right off the bat. That's going to be one of the main things to like not getting too frustrated with this. Don't worry about filling every single slot, especially if you go with a large one like this. Fill it over time. Fill it over time. Make life easy for yourself because you may find that you spread things too thin and then you're going to need another area for enchanted books or for arrows or I don't know something right you're gonna need you're gonna need different areas for different things later on don't worry about filling it all right now and then once you have this done let's do one of these together so we can kind of see how we want to organize a individual section okay I've spent a little time working on things here I want to kind of walk you through my process that I went through so I've labeled a section for I was about to say it's not Blackstone, it's Deep Slate. I've <laughs> labeled a section for Deep Slate and I've organized it in this manner. So we have all of our cobbled Deep Slate here with any stairs, slabs, and walls that we'll get from that. Uh, this is just the regular Deep Slate that you can't do anything with. Uh, this is also tough, which we cannot do anything with. Um, and then I have the different types of Deep Slate here, the bricks, the uh, polished and the tiles that are all labeled in the same way or organized in the same way as the deep slate chest up there. And we have these blank ones here. I don't know what to put in them yet. So these will just kind of be extra storage to where if I need extra for some reason, maybe I get a whole lot of deep slate. I want to move it down and have like another chest of it. I can do that. Kind of the same process with all the stones, right? We got cobble. We have everything kind of broken up and organized out. You can sort things how you want them, um, of course, but that's just kind of how I did it, just to kind of sort them out and then have it to where if I need to build with stone, instead of just making more stone stairs every single time I need stone, I'll come in here and I'll look and see what stone stairs I have first and bring them with me. 
Uh, we have a chest for mossy stuff here, which I don't really have any mossy stuff yet. But when we do get some, eventually all the mossy things will go there. Uh, we have all of the like individual stone bits here. We have polished and regular. So you can kind of see how I've organized that out. Uh, then we're getting stuff up here that we're doing more like bulk storage one, right? So dirt, grass, this grass one will end up having coarse dirt, grass, and maybe like podzol or something. I don't know. I don't even know how much that stuff I'll use, but it's there if I need it. Uh, we'll have one for all of the moss bits that we have, which we don't have anything for moss right now. But when we get it, we'll make sure we put all the things that come from moss there, moss carpets and maybe the azalea bushes and that kind of stuff, uh, gravel, sand. And then I have a section here for wood, which I've not yet sorted, but we'll do our woods in here, sort of like we did the stones. Um, this one right here is going to be for more like decorative bits, things like lanterns and chains. And I think I mentioned earlier and I'll kind of categorize them out as we go, because I don't really have a lot of that stuff now. Right. So if you don't have a lot of something, you don't need to force yourself to make a category, a label for every single thing don't worry about doing that just get the cat just get the broad category made up and then fill in what you have in a way that makes some kind of sense and then don't force the rest of it do the rest of it later and then i haven't done we need to do this next part hold on let me get what i need and then over here we may do a junk area I'll always put a bucket there kind of like a waste bin a uh, home for like the junk area and what i'm gonna do and, and hopefully I, I don't get stuck in just this stuff sitting in here forever. Um, I'm sure some of you will probably yell at me if I do. <laughs> um, but I'm going to take all the rest of my stuff that's just kind of like chilling here. Where's my axe? And I'm just going to throw everything in these chests. Get rid of these ones that are just kind of like making the area look ugly. That way I can finish up this episode and get it out to you guys. And we'll just put everything in a junk area and then we'll start sorting out from here. So, you know, I'll be able to go in and see that I need to sort out copper. I need to find a place for that and iron. So I'll figure out where that's going to go. Probably in like the precious metals section and the, the, the cool, the whatever, the diamond section is where that'll go. And then we'll just kind of slowly sort things out of here as we go. That way we have a nice clean looking room to finish the episode with and make a thumbnail from. OK, so now that we're done going over all of the storage stuff and it, you may not need or want a storage room anywhere in, near this large for your first storage room. Me, I, I know I'm going to keep the storage room for quite a while, probably before I get to automated storage. So I would like to be able to keep things somewhat organized. So a lot of storage room is what I want. But at the very minimum, make sure you have your labeling system down and you organize things in a fashion. It makes it easy for you to find stuff and not just have a whole bunch of junk chests like I've already started out with. Anyways, though, we need to make this area now look good. Now, I'm not talking about looking good in normal Minecraft mode. I'm talking about our first adventures into RTX mode. So if we turn RTX mode on, it's dark. It's really dark. Why did it get so dark? Because RTX mode specifically only shows visible lighting. And the only visible lights that are here are the glow berries. We hid all of our under other lights underneath the floor. That way everything would be spawn proof. So even though RTX mode is really dark in here, it's still spawn proof because this is only talking about visible lighting, not the game lighting like you see here. So we actually need to go through, we need to add in some lighting and also this ceiling's feeling a little bit flat. So maybe we'll add in a little bit of detail to that too. Probably just kind of something like we've done in here. Not too much, nothing too crazy. And then we'll uh, we'll see what things look like with RTX mode once we got some real lighting in here because it really makes the place look good. And the transformation is done. It does bring quite a lot of like life to the to the room. I still feel like we're going to need to do something with the center area. I don't know what that is yet. And maybe we'll have a purpose for that sometime later in the season. My dripstone, it hasn't grown at all. So we're just going to let it keep growing and maybe we'll add in some stalactites or something there at some point soon. Uh, we also made sure we lit up these little corridors and we lit up this area too. But the most important thing is, how does it look in RTX mode? The answer, it looks really good. Oh man, I love the way RTX looks. Look how you get like the reflection off the floor. Um, it's just the way that the light like is gives this nice warm glow. It looks really cool. I like the glow berries too. They just add like a little bit of extra pop to the room. And I'm super happy with how this turned out. You see like the reflection and the emerald blocks. It looks so good as you move around the room. I absolutely love it. 
And that is going to be all for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and drop a comment down below. Let me know how you're enjoying the integration between stream and video. Also, let me know down below if you decided to check out the stream and use the chapter feature that I mentioned earlier to find parts of this process that I couldn't include in the video and just what you generally thought about that. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.